Hello, folks. Welcome back to the Podcast Digest. My name is Dan Lizette, and thank you very much for taking the time to come back and join me again for episode 154 of this little wonderful project I've got called the Podcast Digest. One of the reasons it's so wonderful is I get the chance to talk to awesome people like my guests this week, which I'll tell you about in just a second. But before I do, if you want to check out more great in-depth behind-the-scene interviews with all kinds of the hosts and producers of podcasts you love, guys, go ahead and check out the back catalog. Go to thepodcastdigest.com uh, and subscribe. Share the show. Uh, and if you really like what I do, I am a one-man show and would really appreciate your support. I haven't talked about it lately because I I hadn't been releasing at least semi-regular episodes. I am again now and plan to continue. So check us out on Patreon. Uh, if you want to support the show directly, I would greatly appreciate that. Uh, there's a link in the show notes and just search for the podcast digest on Patreon. And I thank you very much for that. Another reason I bring that up is this is my first episode in a very long time without a show sponsor. Maybe, maybe we keep it that way. We're going to see how that works. But uh, if you, uh, uh, would like to do so, check out the Patreon page. So enough of that. Let's get to this week's show. This is a great one. I'm super excited when I first heard about this new show coming out from Radiotopia and two women who I've been huge fans of for a number of years with their show uh, over on WNYC, uh, which everyone knows and love, note to self. When I heard that they were starting something new called ZigZag, I had to dig into it and look at what it was. And when I learned more about it, I'm like, oh, this is interesting. Started listening and I was like, I would love the chance to talk to them about what they're doing. And that's what we're doing here on episode 154. So Manoush Zamarodi and Jen Point from ZigZag are my guests this week. And I just want to point out that we did record this conversation via Skype. And if you've ever done that, you know that sometimes you pick up some background noises and things of the like. Nothing too bad. I think it's uh, still a great conversation. And I just wanted to put that out there in case you hear some things in the background. But I hope you enjoy. And please share this one with a friend. I think a lot of people are going to love this show. Now to my conversation with Manoush and Jen. All right, folks. And as I mentioned up front, my guest this week from the brand new show from Radiotopia, ZigZag, I have hosts and producers, Manoush Zamarodi and Jen Poyant. Manoush and Jen, welcome to the Podcast Digest. It's awesome to be back. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Manoush is making her return after several years. And this is the first time I've had the pleasure to speak to you, Jen. So welcome both. I appreciate it. Thank you. So we're happy to be here. And there's big news, big news going on. ZigZag is all over my email inbox and Twitter feed, <laughs> which is awesome. That means the promotion is working and uh, I have checked it out. And folks, we hope that you will too. But let's learn more about how this came to be, because this is a, a story unlike most new podcasts. There's a lot more going on. So uh, you guys both were at WNYC for a good long while. So who wants to kind of take us from that first seed of uh, maybe something different uh, up until now? Uh, I'll, I'll start us off and then I'll hand it over to Jen. So Jen and I, um, were sort of matched together, um, at the show, uh, note to self, which I was hosting and she came on as the executive producer, I think, uh, three years ago. Exactly. Right, Jen? Yep. That's right. And, um, so we just really found that we had very similar sort of aesthetic for radio and same goals. We were making the show and having a really, really great time. And actually, I, I really credit Jen with with taking note to self uh, to a much wider audience, which was great. Um, but I think what happened for us is in the last year or so, um, six months, um, as we sort of explain in chapter one of ZigZag, um, there was kind of the perfect storm for us. There was a Me Too moment at WNYC, which really unsettled us. Um, there was also this sense that, that mainstream America was really starting to think very hard about the role of tech and the big tech companies in their lives, which was something that we'd been doing for years at that point. And then I think the boot was put in with the Cambridge Analytica, uh, scandal, which I had been kind of obsessed with for way before it, it was in all the headlines. And so the sense that people... Uh, we're really getting digitally woke and understanding that uh, digital privacy was a huge issue. So we were looking at all these things happening and just starting to think, you know, we really want to do this. We want to go bigger. We want to 
uh, make podcasts. Yes, because that's what we're good at. But we also uh, know that they can be turned into other things. Um, one of the projects I did at Note to Self, Bored and Brilliant, was a book that got released in September. Um, we'd been talking about video projects. Uh, I'd done a TED Talk. And so we, we just started thinking, like, wouldn't it be great to be able to call the shots? Does that sound fair, Jen? Yeah. And I think the only other thing that we didn't, that you didn't cover was also that you um, had gotten kind of approached by a Mm. philanthropic organization. So there was also this sense that we were doing something right so so much that other platforms wanted to see if we, you know, they could make us bigger essentially. I'll tell you what, what's amazing about this story to me when, when uh, I first heard about what you folks were doing was this is gutsy. It seems super, super gutsy to me because from me as a rabid, passionate listener perspective, uh, I was a note to self listener since New Tech City and the transition over. And to me, from the outside looking in, this is one of the most successful podcasts out there in a big house and home in WNYC. And like you mentioned, Manoush, things like books and huge projects and listener interaction, like I don't think many shows really see, you guys had a lot of things going with this. And to be able to take these ideas and these motivations and to transfer it into something completely new and independent took guts. Well, have we achieved that transition, Dan? I mean, I think (laughs) that's where things, I I will say that Jen and I have never, uh, liked complacency. Um, For some reason, every time we tried something and it worked, we'd breathe a sigh of relief and then decide that we were going to do something else that was bigger and more scary. That just just seems to be our MO. That is definitely the creative partnership that I think we're trying to capture and zigzag. And and I think, you know, trust us, like making the decision to leave note to self was extremely difficult. Uh, That really, that show really was uh, my baby. But I think there comes a point, I think, as grown ass women, some would say, where you really want to be uh, in charge of your budgets and your editorial decisions. And I think for us, when we started speaking to um, all the people out there that we knew, because of course, you know, uh, podcasting and journalism are the biggest and smallest <laughs> world <laughs> out there. Um, we came across this crazy experiment that was happening and Jen and I love a good crazy experiment. And this was civil, which is uh, a whole nother thing we can talk about, but this idea of using the blockchain to create a more sustainable marketplace for journalism. Uh, and, and they were, they, you know, recruited us. They said, we'll give you a grant. We'll get you started. Um, and, and I think, this was after we had already quit our jobs and lost the first grant that we thought we were going to get from a philanthropist. But that sort of um, set us on the path very quickly. And it was why we were able to uh, go from quitting our jobs uh, in April to turning around a podcast. Oh, wow. Two and a half months later. That's crazy (laughs) when I say it out loud. Um, Yeah. So like we have, we had people rooting for us all along the way and also Radiotopia did not hear a single piece of audio um, and yet said, yes, we would love you to join. So, um, you know, having a track record means something. And that, that was very, very, uh, I think I, I, I'm like tearing up talking about it. It like means so much when people say the work that you've done is worthwhile and we support you in going forward to make more of it. Um, We will, we will put our good names and actually some cash behind it. Oh, I, th- I think the reverse is true. And one of the reasons that I, I say that is that I heard your two names starting something new and that mm. was subscribe. I mean, <laughs> it oh, could have been awesome. about, Thank you, you. Know, it could have been about anything, you know, uh, Swedish folklore and <laughs> subscribe, you know, <laughs> that's it could a good have been one. Anything. I like that. Pick that was something. like our second. You know, yeah. It was the runner up. <laughs> uh, Folks who haven't yet subscribed and haven't let listen, I guarantee you are going to be thinking about this. And I wanted you two to address it because it was my first initial thought. And I don't know that it's a full or fair comparison. In fact, I know it's not. And I, I want uh, either or both of you to speak to this. So people are going to think this is like Startup Volume 2, right? <laughs> a, a spin on Startup, right? That's going to be sort of the, in the ether. Until you start to listen to all that's involved, you're, you're going to realize it's a much different thing. But Talk to that a little bit, because I have a feeling that could be an impression. And if I recall correctly or, or remember some of the, the things that are coming up, uh, you guys talk with Alex and Matt and, and things of that nature. Oh, you have been listening. Yes. Jen, yes. you want to take this one? Yes. As a matter of fact, um, I went to Matt um, as we 
right after we joined Civil, I, I used to work with Matt years ago on a new show at WNYC called The Takeaway. Uh, so he and I are friends, and I wanted him to know that we were doing this partially because it does initially sound similar to startup. I was aware of that and um, just wanted him to know and and then went to talk with him and interviewed him initially and then asked uh, if Manoush and I could sit down with him and Alex and talk about their process because their process actually is quite or, or was quite different Um they chose really very quickly in, uh, to go after venture capital funding. And at that point, when I went to see him, we weren't sure what type of funding we were going to get mm. and what we were going to do. I mean, we knew we were going to start experimenting with this blockchain experiment. But, you know, as as you'll hear throughout the, the first episodes of the season, first half, we were really still exploring the business model. And since he was an old friend, I wanted to talk to him about it. But yeah, I would say there are some comparisons, but there are also some major differences. We're two women. We are both, um, you know, working mothers that have explored work-life balance issues extensively in the tech arena on Note to Self for many mm-hmm. years. Uh, and we're doing this um, experiment with the blockchain, which is completely different than startups. So there are similarities. They're friends of ours. And honestly, we think of them, you know, as... Uh, examples to look towards and then, you know, also ways where we can chart our own path. Yeah, I, I think that's exactly right. And I would say the other key difference is um, our goals. So Alex's goal was to build a podcasting empire. Um, our goal, which we, you know, when we sat down and we're like, what is this thing that we want to make Sable Genius Productions? It really was mission first for us. And that is to help people navigate personal and global change. Um, and so for us, the ideas come first and then the media products around it. Um, so as, as I said, like podcasts, we really see them as a lab, a place where you can build those really deep relationships with listeners. They will give you feedback. I mean, I've just been going through our inbox, like unbelievable. These two women uh, left us a message. They are co-founders of a company. They're about, you know, a decade ahead of us. And they just said, we hear what you are going through. We are we are your future selves and it's going to be good. And these are the choices that you're going to have to make. And just unbelievable support and ideas and solutions for us. And then also said, we want to make a donation. So please make sure, you know, tell us how to do that. Um, so the, the podcasting relationship with listeners, I think, is extraordinary. And I think it is the place to test big ideas uh, like the ones we want to test um, in regards to that mission, uh, which we really care very deeply about. Um, so I think that's a fundamental difference as well, which you will see play out uh, through the podcast. Yeah, that doesn't make it, it easier. That makes it harder for us, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's exactly what I was just going to say, because as we mentioned, Gimlet sort of made a podcast to ultimately make more podcasts. That's not necessarily the goal, although here's one question somebody also might be wondering. Uh, are future podcasts potentially spinoff versions uh, part of potentially the stable geniuses portfolio in the future or too early to say? What do you think, Jen? I would say yes. Uh, but we, you know, we need to figure out our business model um, and make sure that Manoush and I are making sh- shows or content or media that we bo- we really love and that's meaningful to us and to our listeners. That's the first goal. But, um, you know, we'd love to make more podcasts. It just has to be within kind of our wheelhouse and um, kind of have our sense of aesthetic and mission to it. What's interesting to me is that, and, and I wonder about the thought process for for the two of you behind this. It seems to me that there is this realization of the blockchain and what it can do. And folks, I'm not going into big detail on this because I want you to listen to it because Manoush and Jen did a great job, especially in episode two uh, with song uh, to, to bring this home for your understanding. So listen to it. You'll understand what we're talking about. But pause here. Go listen. Come back. Um, so that's obviously a big idea behind all this. Mm. But this is hopefully an enabler to several other big ideas that you guys hope to tackle. Was there ever a thought process that, you know, are we – launching too much are we hoping for too much do we want just a single piece or was it like no this we're going to go for it all and see how much we can get i think we're in the midst of that right now um one thing that i think jen and i learned um through note to self was that predicting what's going to happen 
and then you, you end up fulfilling, doing a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you're like, I'm going to make this and this is going to happen, then I find that people aren't open to all the wonderful opportunities that come along the way. Um, and so I think we're trying very hard, as much as we can financially, to be listening to our listeners as carefully as possible. What resonates with them? How can we help? to find out other stories or solutions to these tech and society issues that we can shed light on or explain, um, to look for new ways um, to, do, to, to delve into these narratives that are unusual and make us laugh and find joy in all of the crazy stuff going on in our world right now. Like drunk and I think, <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. And, um, and so I think we're at a very interesting moment right now where we are just very open and we want to see where this first podcast goes because we feel like this is a testing of the waters and we cannot begin to predict what is going to happen to this company, uh, even just six months, maybe even next month <laughs> down the road. Yeah, and the only other thing I'd say um, to that question as well is is that we're also learning, and I think you can hear this in the show, you know, Manoush and I have um, had the pleasure and um, and really the privilege of working at public radio institutions, and before mm-hmm. Manoush came to WNYC, she worked for the BBC, among other big um, news institutions, and yeah. so we've always had teams behind us, wonderful people working really hard to help us make uh, the work that we make. And it's, it's really the first time where we're really having to do it mostly ourselves. We have a few, um, you know, freelance audio engineers that have their own businesses that are helping us uh, and an intern, but really like we're learning uh, what it takes to make big ambitious shows, pretty much just the two of us. So it's an interesting question of trying to then think bigger and think about other shows and other ideas when really, um, We'd have to grow both in um, in scale and uh, uh, and uh, essentially make some money before we can grow any further. <laughs> yeah. Because when I listen to the first couple of episodes, I almost think in the back of my head, and please correct me if I'm I'm wrong, it almost seems to me like the biggest thing on the plate, one of the biggest thing, but one of the biggest impacts, if you will, especially the journalistic question, right? The idea of sort of the, the fake news problem, if you will, mm-hmm. if using that blockchain or even just by bringing attention to it or talking to the people, you know, who can really impact this or actively playing a role yourselves, if this were to actually be implemented and to start to see real results that, that could be impactful in society and culture, that would seem like an even bigger role than we have three shows now, if that makes that's, any sense. Well, you know that's, I, mean? I think you put your finger right on it. And I think that is, um, as civil rolls out its newsrooms, as we're called, I think we were number four. Uh, there's dozens in the queue coming up and they're also going to launch, uh, the civil token, which is a cryptocurrency. Uh, so people can sort of be part of this new ecosystem for journalism. And that is, that is honestly like the big, big question. And what we are documenting in this podcast is this is a, we're not the only ones taking risks. There are hundreds of people uh, behind this civil platform, all taking huge risks. And they are some of the smartest, most uh, invested, intellectually invested people I have ever met. And, and that, you know, even if this whole thing fails, the fact that all these brains are working towards building this new platform. Um, and, and you know what? It might not fail. It might actually work. And I, I, I hope we can say that we were there at the start right. of it, but we'll see. That would be amazing. I, it's one of those things that this happens to me sometimes on podcasts, and it happened to me listening to the first couple episodes when I was driving in my car this morning as I was finishing up the second one. And you, your mind starts to tune out what you're listening to because it's starting to run with what you just heard. Yes. And that happens yes. occasionally. Too. And that happened with these first couple episodes when you were going through uh, the details of the blockchain and how it works. It was like, oh, interesting. And, and you know <laughs> like, what? Isn't that great, Dan? That like yeah. you started to get like excited by something super nerdy and, and to envision the potentials of this technology to solve some of the biggest problems. Like yep. that is exactly where Jen and I were. And you just start to tingle kind of, right? And you yeah. think, 
oh my God, everybody needs to know about this. And, and even again, if it doesn't work, it is a beautiful narrative way to get people really starting to think about solutions and understanding that doom and gloom is not going to help anyone. We have to figure out how we move forward with uh, digital privacy, with the uh, wealth disparity, with gender inequality in the workplace, with the role of technology in our lives, making sure that it works for our good. Um, so like that, you know, I think Jen and I have always been very solutions oriented and that was very exciting about Sybil to meet these people who could build it. There's so many interesting storylines going on throughout this first show, if you will, first season. And what's interesting is that there's obviously going to be more to come, hopefully, right? Uh, hopefully with success, which makes me wonder and ask the story. There's got to be a behind the scenes story. Stable genius. This is a Trump <laughs> thing, right? This has got to be a Trump thing. Yes. <laughs> At least in part. Yeah. yeah we, go ahead, Manoush. Well, I was just going to say that Jen called me and she's like, I think we should call ourselves Stable Genius Productions. And I started laughing and I was like, oh, we could be like a group of stable genius, a stable of geniuses. I thought was thinking like ponies and horses. <laughs> and she was like, no, you idiot. Did you read <laughs> Trump's Twitter line? And I was like, oh, so... Um, I think it's it's so many meanings layered into it, Dan. Um, but so, yes, there's a there's a reference to the, the crazy Trump Twitter that he is a stable genius. I think, you know, a lot of people talk about crazy women being dummies. So obviously we <laughs> put that right in its place. And also, I think we really, you know, we do want to build some sort of uh, collective of our own, whether that's on civil, whether that is a, a, a podcast collective, we're not sure yet. We want to see how the landscape sort of shakes out. But yeah, that's the origin story. Well, now we will all await for the ultimate crossover when either they come to join you uh, on ZigZag or you guys go over there to one of their many shows when we see Crooked Media and Stable Genius mm. Productions team Ooh. up <laughs> for some nice. type of guest spot. That'd be cool. It's kind yeah, of that. they have a new show called Hysteria, which I'm kind of curious about. There we go. See, yeah. it's a, mm. we just need to get all those names together. In, in yes. Hysteria. <laughs> sta- Sounds great. It does sound so, good. You guys mentioned Radiotopia is current home, and I know through PRX and WNYC and the, and the public radio world, there was obviously, you guys are probably familiar with a lot of the Radiotopia folks already, but one wonders, right? Especially because you've got the, the Gimlet folks uh, play a part in upcoming episodes and, and what have you. There could have been any number of different homes for this, or you could have been completely independent. Uh, I'm wondering why Radiotopia? What were the advantages? Yeah, so I... Um I think for Jen and I, ownership was the number one thing, right, Jen? Yep, that was a yeah. big priority is that we wanted to own the work that we were making and developing. So Radiotopia was founded on that premise um, of podcast makers owning their work. And I think that and the aesthetic of Radiotopia shows and, um, you know, frankly, my relationship with Roman Mars, the host of 99% Visible, the co-founder of Radiotopia, and with Carrie Hoffman, um, the CEO of PRX, um, just kind of felt like a very natural fit. There wasn't a lot of, it all happened pretty easily and quickly. And, and, you know, the public radio world is small and, um, it just made sense. Do you want to add to that, Jim? Yeah, I just think, I think both with Sybil and with, uh, with Radiotopia, there really is kind of a sense of a collective spirit. Mm. Uh, and, the, and um, you know, with Sybil, it's journalists and technologists joining together to create a new system. And, and with Radiotopia, which has been around for a little bit longer, it really is. It's these, these podcasters and hosts and producers. We all uh, cross-promote on our um, shows together. I don't know if you guys noticed the um, the little earworm in the second episode, but uh, the the person that did the the guitar riff um, <laughs> is a Radiotopia member, and Martin. yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um, shout out to Martin, thank you so much for that. But it's just a it's a really warm, um, supportive, creative environment. So we're happy to be with them. And I should say, chapter four. Not, uh, that's the next episode coming up. Is us. Uh, going to visit Roman at his 99% Invisible shop in Oakland and um, to talk through the business models of podcasting with him and our sort of fears and hopes and um, 
weaknesses. <laughs> um, and, and so there is definitely moral support that comes from them, too. I tell you, I, I don't know him hardly at all. He was a previous guest on the show, so we chatted for about an hour, and I shook his hand at Podcast Movement once, and that was it. But that was more than enough for me to realize uh, what a great guy he is. He, he seems to good be. Good people. Yep. Yes, very much so. Manoush, I know you've got to run. I want to throw yeah. one more question out there real quick that you might want to comment on because it's another thing I've been wondering about Ooh. ZigZag. Was ZigZag itself, and what listeners are going to hear right now, which is this combination of a kind of real-time documentary experiential type podcast, which I think is a little different than, than some of the past productions you guys have been involved in. Was this always part of the plan with Stable Genius, or did this kind of at some point during the process be like, you know what? I think I know what our first show is. Oh, yeah. I mean, the minute we walked out of our first meeting with the civil folks, it was very clear. It was like, this is an incredible experiment that they are embarking on. We're going to be part of it. And for sure, we are going to document it because it's fascinating. I think there, to me, telling the story through our own experience um, with this uh, journalism experiment is just such a, a, a natural way to make some like really tough ideas like blockchain technology and journalism's business models. I mean, yawn, right? But throw us two weirdos in the mix and like that can <laughs> make it like fun and interesting and personable and intimate and about women and ambition and entrepreneurship um, as well. And to, it was it was like, I don't know, Jen, would you agree? It was like a flash of lightning happened. Yeah, it's, that's exactly what it felt like. I mean, there was just no question that this is the, the first podcast that we would do. Uh, and, you know, the other thing too, just to add to what Manoush just said was that, you know, we, there's a line in the first episode where we speak directly to both men and women about this moment where women are deciding, mm. you know, this is it. Like, I, I got to take a leap of faith and do something here. And we, we decided to do that, but we kind of knew that other people would identify with that. It's, this is a real big moment in our society. It's mm. not just mm -hmm. us. It's, it's a lot of people saying it's time for us to take ownership. It's time for us to use our voices, to tell our stories. And we want to pr provide a, a platform for that to happen, both, both with ourselves, but, but, you know, for all sorts of women out there that are that have been going through this. And I think already uh, we know that we're going to start seeding those voices in the show as well, Dan, because I think, you know, we definitely learned that at Note to Self. Yeah. Like, listeners, they're awesome. They're amazing. And they have great stories to tell. So we'll be we'll be you'll be hearing from them, too. Absolutely. And I look forward to it. And uh, it's it's going to be an awesome run for sure. And Manoush, I know you need to leave us real quick. And Jen, if you don't mind sticking around for a few more minutes, I got a no, couple more questions. All. That'd be great. Uh, Manoush, thanks for joining me again. Oh, I really damn. appreciate it. It was so fun talking to you. This was great. All right. Bye, guys. All right. And we're back with Jen. And she is uh, gracious enough to stick around with us, Jen Plant, uh, for a little bit longer. And I wanted to kind of go behind the scenes a little bit. That's kind of one of the things I love to do here is to give folks, you know, something they're not going to hear on the episode releases. Um, and I, I'm always intrigued by sort of this documentary style. And I'm using that term. It might not be the right one, but uh, because you hear so much real audio and what have you. And I'm kind of wondering how this started to come together. And I, you guys had Megan Tan on, I think, episode two. And mm -hmm. uh, she's a two-time previous guest of mine. I love talking to her. And she's great. One, one of the things I asked her all the time was, how did you handle all this audio you had to ultimately come up with an episode? So I'm curious to start the story here, sort of what did you guys decide to start recording? How did that collection go? And more importantly, how do you get it down into a few episodes? Man, that's a great question. And it really is a process. I mean, essentially, and we had to experiment, right? Because this is different than note to self. Uh, and also two dope Queens, the other show I used to produce at WNYC, the, you know, the process for production, it just depends on what you're doing and, uh, where you think the narrative is going to go. So what Manoush and I decided to do is we just started recording our conversation. So you'll notice, um, that you'll hear voice memos back and forth between us. And then sometimes, you know, we'd be having a conversation together just out in, in the world and we'd realize like, Oh, this is, there's a tingly feeling that we get when we realize that this is something interesting enough to record. So we would just hit record and continue our conversation very naturally. So that started it. But then, you know, we realized, for example, we decided um, on, during that first, I guess it was a second civil meeting, 
um, to record that. So we started to get, just get a sense, like, you know, we both have backgrounds as public radio reporters. Uh, so we started recording out in the field uh, whenever we were having a conversation that we felt potentially could fit the narrative. And we'd upload that tape immediately to Dropbox and just um, to kind of timestamp it. So essentially just put it in a folder with a date for that week. And um, and really our process is that Manoush will go in and I'll kind of remind her about the interesting conversations or the interesting tape we might have. Um, but then she writes the initial first episode. Um, and I'll tell you that process for the f- very first episode, we ended up going through nine revisions of the show, like full revisions. Um, so the very first draft was absolutely nothing like the sec, uh, the, the ninth, um, version, but it really is just, it's the process is that she'll write the show around a bunch of tape and she'll pick out pieces of tape and I'll say, no, that's not the right piece of tape. Or you're forgetting the one that where we screamed on the street or whatever it is. <laughs> right. And then she'll go and replace that tape. And then you have to reintroduce that tape in the, in the writing. And so it's just a co- total creative evolution um, throughout. And the, the scary part is when you start to run out of time and your deadline is, is fast approaching. We're in the process right now of, of um, revising episodes three and four. Um, so it's we're, we're kind of curious to see what, what these episodes are going to look like by the end of the season. We're hoping we can keep up the same level of quality. Um, but it's, it's actually a really fun creative process. And that's, um, I, that's very reflective of our creative partnership. I think she writes, I edit, she writes again, I edit. Um, and then we just go round and round like a merry go round. So that just made me think of something else. This is pretty close to real time. So three and four are in process. So for example, five, mm-hmm. anything started on that or just kind of rough outline or where are we at that point? Yep. So, um, I, I don't know if she would be like, oh, I can't believe you're telling this, but it's okay. We're very transparent, but she, we have, a, we have rough outlines for, for every episode throughout the rest of the season. Right. Uh, and there are 12 episodes. Um, but what we have found in the first four so far is that our outlines turned out to be nothing like the actual shows. Um, so, uh, and that's just because of that creative process, you know, that you're trying to make sure we're getting um, the narrative and it is close to real time. Um, eventually it's going to catch up in real time. And right. we're lucky in the sense that we both, because we both have um, breaking news backgrounds, I think we can handle fast turnaround production. Um, I mean, it's kind of intense, but I used to work on a daily uh, news show at WNYC. It was a national um, news show called The Takeaway. So that was, you know, every day getting up at four in the morning and, you know, you, by the end of the day, you're, you're, you're done. So we know how to turn around, turn things around fast, but this is going to be quite challenging, particularly when um, the civil token auction happens. We don't know where this uh, this auction is going to take us. Um, and it's, we you know, we actually still don't know exactly when it's going to happen. We think we know, but we're waiting for all of that. And once it does, the, the narrative really could go anywhere, whether it's going to work, whether people are going to be into it, whether our listeners are going to be into this idea of a token economy and supporting us in that way or supporting civil that way. Um, it's just many different ways that that um, that it could go. In many different ways, this is a completely new experiment uh, that you guys are putting on, which is one of the reasons I think it's such an interesting listen and why I, I wanted to talk with you guys about this because I, I, it's an amazing road. One element that you guys bring up, and it's pretty front and center in episode one, you mentioned the uh, audio on the street and the drunk jogging, is you guys reiterate, as, as you would think one would, the uh, parenting, the motherhood aspect to uh, what you guys are trying to accomplish. And obviously you guys are, you know, family responsibilities and would be a financially mm-hmm. or being a parent and so on and so forth. Yep. And and it reminded me as well when I was speaking to Megan, and one of the things that, when you mentioned fast turnaround, made me think of this, is one of the things that Megan talked about, and one of the reasons I heard on the How Sound interview she did uh, after the ending of Millennial was how tough it was to sort of uh, transfer or transform her personal experiences sure. into a produced product. Yes. And I'm wondering, is that conversations that the two of you have had either with each other or with your families? And, and what are the feelings about putting yourselves personally out there so much more than, say, you know, note to self was? Yes, I, we, have, we have definitely had those conversations. Uh, and I think we're, we're trying very, um, trying to be very careful, particularly with our kids, um, and we actually did have that conversation a few years ago on Note to Self. We, had, we did an episode that got a lot of attention um, from the parenting community about whether or not it's okay to oh, post photographs of your kids. Yes. yes, I remember so that one. Yeah. 
this has been an ongoing and Manoush had, you know, airs more on the side of, of privacy and not doing that. And I was a producer at the time, so I wasn't in the public eye as much. Um, so now it's funny because I, I still do post pictures of Bison, but I, I do feel for her a little bit more from that conversation now that I'm a little bit more out in the public eye with the show. But we, we do, we talk a lot about um, how much we can talk about our kids, uh, but not just our kids, like you said, our families as well. The other thing is, is our families um, ha- just have to put up with us. This is such an all-consuming um, experiment right now and process. Really starting a business for anyone is. So our families have been very supportive, uh, but they have to listen to this over and over and over again. And all the, you know, all the... <laughs> all the stories and the ups and downs and the zigzags. So um, we do, we try really hard to create some borderlines, you know, some, some boundary of, of privacy in our lives where we're not going to go there, but you'll, you'll see um, moments here and there where, where Manoush's husband will pop up in the, in the show, or you might hear one of our sons here or there, but for the most part, the narrative around motherhood is really going to be our experiences that I think a lot of particularly working mothers and working parents um, can can relate to. And I think that's OK to be transparent there because people need to have that conversation in our society. We need to have that conversation about how challenging it is. And it's not a new conversation. And Marie Slaughter um, you know, brought this conversation up years and years ago with women, you know, why can't we have it all? And we're continuing that conversation and we're doing it in a very transparent way. And I'm okay with that. I want my son, uh, to, to grow up one day and hear this and, you know, know how hard I worked, uh, to, to further that conversation. But also, you know, this is also in a way, you know, it's, we're doing this to help, um, support our families as well. So right. hopefully he will, um, see and appreciate that. You mentioned your more forward and public role with Zigzag and, and with Stable Genius, I imagine, all together uh, in terms of, <laughs> a, from a privacy perspective, and, and really your voice on a podcast more than, <laughs> than folks have used to. I know you have the background reporting. It's not like your voice on radio is something completely new. Yeah. But in terms of recent productions, if you will, it's it's a lot more present in Zigzag than, than the last couple of years. Yes. Were you hesitant or you were, or, or was it more, I'm ready? No, it's interesting. I felt like like I was ready. Um, and, you know, we didn't know what format we were going to make the show in when we first started producing it. So we experimented very for a very short time with, with the two of us co-hosting it, and it just didn't work. Um, and, you know, she, I think she, Manoush was nervous that it wasn't working, and she was afraid I was going to be hurt. And I said to her, no, I know it's not working. And it's really challenging. I mean, our our we have a lot of different hats we're wearing in this business relationship, right? I'm producer, she's host, she's writer, I'm editor. We're business partners. Uh, you know, it's a lot. And so to do a co-hosting um, role as well, we just realized it was just too complicated. So I stepped back to do the, to stay on the production side, but but still tell our narrative through the tape. And that was, uh, that felt very natural to both of us. So I did, I did feel ready. Um, and I do feel like this story can't be told really without telling, uh, telling it from this perspective and, you know, and for both of our voices to be there so that women can really, uh, women and men can relate to this concept of partnership, creative partnership, editorial partnership, business partnership. It's so fundamental, fundamental to the, to the narrative. And to be fair, I asked that question more for your personal perspective than than I was sort of being ignorant to a degree because I'd heard your name for years. Anyone who's a real <laughs> podcast listener who listens to the credits of so many things would have heard your name for a very long time. So I, I don't think you're completely mysterious to folks. Um, but, you know, the casual listener who hopefully will also come over, especially because a, a, a lot of the broader themes you guys are going uh, to touch upon, hopefully the broader audience We'll be getting uh, exposed to you for the first time. So, but. well, thank you. I mean, I I think that's I'm always fascinated that people eat, that people recognize our the producers names and that's incredible that they're listening that closely. So, um, well, I I think that. that- I, I think it's simple repetition, right? And and I I know in note to self, your name was at the tag end of probably just about every episode, one way or another, yeah. at least the last <laughs> few years, right? Yeah, sure. Yep. Um, and 
maybe I'm just, I mean, I started a show after my listening habits, but, uh, you know, maybe I'm in the minority, but I think a lot of people hear that. And if it's week after week or, you know, eventually it starts to just become part of the process. I remember fellow now Radiotopian, uh, at least in part, um, Al Letson. Yeah. Uh, speaking with Al, I've talked with him twice. Uh, I used to talk all the time about um, how Al would always thank one of his producers in the credits, um, Jim Briggs. Oh, yeah, <laughs> and Jim's he used great, to, yeah. He used to always kind of do this thing, and, you know, my uh, producer extraordinaire, uh, <laughs> you know, Jay Breezy, you know, and <laughs> it stuck with me, and that's I, the reason I know that name. <laughs> I got to say, I always appreciate that. And there's there's an odd, I think it's a kind of an odd like debate within um, different shows and different institutions on whether, how far you go with the credits. But I like to try and credit people. And and um, I always appreciated that Manoush was um, very uh, generous uh, with with credit, crediting the work of the producers, not just me, but other producers on the show as well. So I, th- I think it needs to be there personally. I mean, that that's just me. because Maybe because I've got a little bit of a sense of that of the work that goes behind it. And, you know, even the daily does it on Fridays, yeah. you, know, you, you know, even that are hitting it. on a Yeah. Case. I mean, and, and like Manoush says, it's, it really podcasting, you know, there's a lot that goes into making these shows and, um, it's a team sport. So, uh, I, I appreciate the fact that she was willing to do that. And, you know, we try to do it as much as we possibly can with, with the people that contribute and help to make our, our work as well. So let me pivot one more time. Let me go back to Stable Genius if mm-hmm. I can, because sure. we, we only briefly talked about, obviously, Stable, and, and it's funny, you go to stable StableG.com, uh-huh. right? yep. which I thought is, a, I love the Stable G part. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> uh, right now it says, you know, here's our first offering. It's the show. Yep. I'm kind of curious. In your I, ideal vision, Jen, mm-hmm. two years from now, five years from now, somebody goes to that same website. What are they seeing up there besides ZigZag Season 5? <laughs> That's a great question. I, I honestly, I would say in our in a dream world, um, we what we want to do is make these different experiments and then see what grows out of them. So we don't know. As an example, uh, you know, when we worked on Note to Self, uh, we ended up doing Bored and Brilliant, and Bored and Brilliant, be, uh, the success out of that experiment turned into uh, a book and then a TED Talk. Um, so you never know what's going to come out of these shows. And, um, you know, you look at civil and they're planning on launching other podcasts. So I don't know, are we going to collaborate? We don't know. We don't know what we're going to do, but what we want to do is we can promise that we're going to try as hard as we can to make really fascinating experience experiments, spin shows off of, off of those, hopefully. Uh, and the other thing that Manoush and I didn't get to talk to you about earlier is that another um, passion of mine is really developing uh, women's voices. Um, so uh, when I was at WNYC, in addition to develop, helping to develop Note to Self, I, I, was also, I also worked with Jessica Williams and Phoebe Robinson and a team of other fantastic women producers at the station to develop um, that podcast, as well as um, the, one of the first women podcasting uh, conferences in America. Um, and that was really important to me. I love the idea of, um, really encouraging women to use their voice in this medium. And back when we first launched that podcasting conference, uh, you know, the ratio between women and men, male hosts was, was pretty low. Um, so, so I don't know. I want to, I want to see, you know, there's a, there's always this, interesting moment where, you know, I come across or Manoush will come across a fantastic data journalist or, you know, all sorts of different, like very talented people. They could be comedians. They can, you know, just, you just don't know where it's going to come from. But when, then all of a sudden you come across a person like that and you think that person, you know, I could see making a show with that person. And to be clear, Phoebe and Jessica already had their pitch ready and, and they came to me and said, Hey, can we, what do you think about doing this? And, and slowly two dope Queens developed as a podcast from a show that they were already doing, um, a stand up show that they were already, already doing in Brooklyn. But that's the cool thing is when you just get these opportunities by, by opening yourself up to really cool, interesting, smart people. So that's what I want to do. I want to be open to see what the opportunities are and then we'll make cool stuff out of that. I think the last time I discussed the topic of women in podcasting was a couple of years ago, and it was probably with either Megan or it could have been um, 
uh, with, um, geez, uh, uh, Devin. Oh, <laughs> with Devin. Uh -huh. Devin Daly. Because I talked to her when she had the Tambor website. Uh -huh. That's how long ago she was a guest of mine back then. And I remember asking the question at the time how they thought it was now versus when they sort of first started. And did they see progress or improvement? So, since we were on the topic and mm -hmm. we're talking now, now that it's been even further down the road, do mm -hmm. you think progress has been made? And what do you think that could continue to be done to, to further that progress? I definitely think progress has been made uh, since we launched. Um, and I don't have the exact numbers, uh, WNYC would, but um, since we launched uh, the Women Podcast Festival, it's called Work It. Um, you know, it's just fascinating to see it started off as like this small very intimate uh, podcast festival with, a, with a, maybe a hundred women that some of them were independent producers, some of them were with institutions. And now uh, that festival has grown to, you know, hundreds and hundreds of women getting together and jumping into the podcast world and working as both hosts and producers. And um, I, I definitely see, even when you just go on and look at the iTunes chart, iTunes charts or, Stitcher and you're kind of browsing through, you just see so many more hosts. You know, it's interesting as a side anecdote to that, um, you know, we had a lot of very well-meaning, uh, good friends that we respect in podcasting, male friends that are high level producers and, and, um, hosts that when we showed them the artwork for, for, uh, zigzag, which has Manoush and my photo on the, on the tile, you know, where you go into, you know, whatever podcasting app you're going to see. And then you see our faces and the zigzag in between. And they were like, Oh, I'm not really a fan of like photos for that tile. And we both said, well, there's no way that people would know that this is the show is hosted by, by women. And we want people to know that. Um, so we, I, I think it's interesting that even still, we just have, we have to make sure that people understand that this is hosted by two women because it's still pretty rare. So there's, there's still a way to a ways to go for for sure, but um, and I have to say the the support that we've gotten from our, from listeners just since the launch, um, they really get that that um, even as two women veteran journalists, it still feels like a big leap of faith for us to go and do this on our own. So uh, we know that it's still it's still a leap of faith for any women, woman to get on the mic and um, and produce their own show. It seems to me. And, and I could be completely wrong here. And again, please slap me down and correct mm -hmm. me if I'm, this is a total ridiculous statement. Um, but it seems to me in the world of podcasts from a listener perspective that the podcasting industry and public radio industry is doing at least slightly better than so many other industries. And I look at a lot of the big players in the game, if you will, when I talk about that, I'm talking about the WNYCs, the Radiotopias, the Gimlets, the Earwolves, the mm -hmm. Podcast Ones, and et cetera. Setting examples and putting out and putting up models for younger aspiring journalists mm -hmm. or producers or hosts to listen to and regularly hear that there are so many phenomenal examples of women excelling and doing it, you know, better than anyone. Forget about man or woman. You know, I, yeah. I, I think I, about Radiotopia. Phoebe Judge, I mean, was yep. one of my first guests. And nobody can do that show better She's than her. I don't care it. who you are. Her and Lauren are killing it. <laughs> like, know? people are just obsessed with that show. Exactly. You and, know, and, and then, yeah, I mean, let's not forget Serial and Julie Snyder. And, <laughs> and yeah. you know, I mean, all of those, the, the women that produce that show... Yeah, um, so many, and 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 it makes me think, and it, it, it makes me think and hope that the, at least the industry is doing a little bit better than others. Hollywood, <laughs> you know, for example, and or so many other things. You know, I've been, I don't know. I, I think it's a good question. I don't know. I mean, I I would say we certainly. I mean, we see it everywhere. It's just it's it's a question of I don't know. Is it a slow burn? I mean, look at Shonda Rhimes. There are certainly women out there that are um, inspiring. And I look at Phoebe and Jessica actually in the comedy field and they're killing it. Look at their yeah. Tudor queen special on, and I, I know that's HBO, a little bit, right? I mean, it's, it's not, that's not meant to like toot my own horn at all. The HBO special was totally separate, but I, I do see, I mean, look, I think if you look at comedy right now, women are killing it in the comedy field. Um, 
So I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it's any better or worse in podcasting. I would say maybe because at least in the small world of kind of radiotopia slash public radio, that genre, there certainly is um, a push for, for more inclusion, um, both, you know, in diversity and inclusion in general. But I, I think that maybe because there's, um, there's, you know, there's an intellectual push and an exploration of society's issues that ha- has happened naturally in public radio for a long time. Um, but I, I'm not sure. That's a really good question. I, I don't know the answer uh, on whether or not podcasting is any better off than Hollywood or other fields. I'm not sure. Yeah, and I would only say slightly. If it is, yeah, it's maybe. only sl- only yeah, by a sliver. There's um, still a long way to go, and that I mean that's one of the reasons we brought up the Me Too stuff is because, um, you know, we we want uh, to inspire other women to 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 go for it. I tell you, whenever I hear Me Too in podcasting, I cannot help but think about the uh, this American Life episode. Oh my god, that episode! On- <laughs> I mean, Jeez. it was just. Did, blows my mind. People were texting me for days. Did you hear it? Did you hear it? Did you hear it? Did you hear the five stories? <laughs> yes, yeah. I heard it. It was incredible. Was that, was that 18 or end of 17? <laughs> I think it was 18. Was I think. it 18? It wasn't I, that long ago. Yeah. Yeah, that was uh, phenomenal. Anyway, total sidetrack. No. Now I'm going to have to put a link of that in the show notes. So <laughs> <laughs> that'll be there too, folks. So no, as people, well. I, and I, I failed to mention Sarah Koenig earlier when I said Julie Schneider, but... um. Yeah. Uh, you know, the people at This American Life have been serving as a great example for, for women and for this um, these issues for a long time. So I give them a big shout out for covering that, those issues right. that they have. And This American Life is going to solve the uh, women in Hollywood problem soon anyway. You know, <laughs> S-Town's getting to be a movie, you know. I, know. <laughs> yeah, but people, they're, I mean, they're, they're, they're really doing, um, they're fascinating to watch those, those models of, you know, these radio stories getting turned into to TV and film. So. Well, zigzag the ABC sitcom. No. Yes. Maybe you never know. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> hey, you can go from producer to, you know, part-time host. Just make it all the way into an actress, make it all the way to TV. Come on. Good Lord. I cannot imagine, but you never know. I'm you not going to say never. <laughs> hey, let's start. All right. I'll, I'll accept a, a compromise. Netflix documentary. All right. We'll start. Hey, there. that sounds good. <laughs> there you go. Well, 12 episodes is the run that we're looking at for season one. Um, Mm -hmm. And then from there, kind of everything's going to be evaluated, looked at, next steps decided at that point. Is that safe to say? That's correct. Yeah. I mean, we're, we certainly are going to do a season two. We know that and a season three. Um, But um, what they look like, we don't know. That's the, that's the fun part for Manoush and I actually is that we're okay with not knowing. We want to see what the audience responds to. We want to see where the civil experiment goes. Uh, we don't know what opportunities are going to come up for us. I mean, it does it does reflect our lives. So we're okay with um, kind of just seeing where our passions take us and where the story takes us, and then we'll we'll figure out season two and three. In a lot of ways, that's kind of how you put together Note to Self, too, right? There was yep. the news, there was listener feedback, there was the combination of both that sort of led to future episodes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's exactly right. So it's not that far. It's it's interesting because Note to Self is such a different show. I mean, we're very happy about that. We were very proud of of the work we did on Note to Self, and it was kind of a constant evolution of of exactly that of our passions and what the audience needed to hear, and also what was happening in the news. And it's similar in that con- in that idea, but we're so happy that the format is so different that you know it's. It's not like anybody's going to compare them and say like, oh, it's, no. it's, it's no self 2.0 or anything like that. No, um, we're, we're excited that we're, we've somehow find, found a way to evolve together in this, in a totally new format, which is challenging for us. We've never really, neither one of us have ever really done narrative, before, like deep narrative um, like this before. So we're excited to, to try new things. Well, the first couple of episodes have been awesome. I'm subscribed. I'm going to say subscribed all the way through all the seasons, uh, no matter Thank how many you. they are. And Thank I you. am really excited uh, about this project you guys got. And, and, and I say this in a full complimentary way. I think now the podcasting landscape has a pretty significant hole in it with the two of you out of note to self. And it'll be curious Aww. to see what happens 
with that that type of content, that type of subject matter, that type of listener interaction on those topics, I think now it has a whole. And I'll be interested to see kind of what steps in to fill that because I, 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 I do credit the work you guys did there for raising a ton of different topics and starting a ton of different conversation. And I think it was, no matter what happens moving forward, you guys uh, will always have this in your back catalog. And it's um, impressive, impressive work. I enjoyed the mess out of it for sure. Well, thank you so much for saying that. We really appreciate it. You know, it's funny. And I don't know if all podcasters feel this way, but sometimes, you know, and certainly I felt this way when I was a broadcast journalist, you, you make the work, you make the work, you get through the deadline, you explore the ideas, you drop it down the feed and then it's gone. <laughs> it's not totally gone with podcasting because there is that back catalog, but you, you don't, you never know whether you're totally, um, you're hitting something that, that people feel like they need. So it's, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, you're most welcome, and, and thank you for all the work that you guys did on that show. And more importantly, uh, I'm excited about what's upcoming. Like I said, as soon as I heard your two names attached to a project I was in, and, and I'll be in for whatever uh, you, you have coming up as well. So, uh, And folks, I hope you will be too. I hope you go check it out. Jen, can you tell folks how they can do that? Yes. Uh, so you can go to zigzagpod.com and follow the links at there's a how to too if you're confused at all, which is totally fine because it's a confusing process to find podcasts still. Um, so there's a how to link in, in there as well so that can kind of walk you through the steps if you have an iPhone or if you have an Andro- Android phone. Um, so you can get the podcast on uh, Apple Podcasts. You could go to Stitcher. Do you want me to do this again after this plane goes to five down? <laughs> Totally up to you. <laughs> <laughs> you can get it on Stitcher or any of the you know Android podcast apps like Spotify as well. So yeah, find us on our website. You could also find us on Twitter, and we're on Instagram. You're going to see lots of weirdo photos of us um, back and forth and going through the editorial process. If you find us on Instagram too, so look for us there as well. Awesome. And uh, Google Podcasts. The app is now live. Google released it today as we record. The Google That's Podcast right. app is now out. So That's we find right. them there as well. So. <laughs> Jen Poyant, thank you so much for taking the time to join me. And folks, check out ZigZag. You won't regret it. A listening experience like you haven't had up to this point. I, I promise you. It, like I said, it will make you start thinking <laughs> as you're listening. So, Jen, thanks again for taking the time to join me. Oh, thank you so much, Dan. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much for having us. And folks, that'll do it for this week's show, episode 154. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Manoush Zamarodi and Jen Point from the brand new show, Zigzag from Radiotopia. Check it out. Subscribe to them. I think you're really, really going to like what you're going to hear at this point. It's uh, definitely to the top of my subscription list. I can't wait to see what these ladies do with this show and Stable Genius moving forward. I think it's going to be uh, a great thing to watch. So until next time, folks, uh, tell everyone you know about the Podcast Digest. Please follow me on Twitter at Pod Digest. That is the number one place to get all my rantings and ravings and communications about the world of podcasts, stuff I'm listening to. I want to hear about what you're listening to. Tell me who I I should look to try to interview next. Uh, reach out to me uh, via Twitter, via email, via the website, thepodcastdigest.com, anything you like. Until next time, my name is Dan Lizette for the Podcast Digest.